Hey family, so I noticed the photo that I took last year, a cloud photo. So when I took this photo, I was taking it. This is how I take the photo, yeah? So I took it that I, when I saw this, I thought it looks like an angel that is falling, that is falling, flying down towards the earth, yeah? So I thought it looked like an angel, yeah? Some sort of creature. And then today, I when I look at the picture again, but I when I turned around, yeah, look, guys, look. Let me make it big. Can you see? There's a face. There's a clearly, ah, it's clear now. There is a face. There is a face. So the bottom of this angel is is flying down, he's falling, and that face looks quite scary, like a skeleton. And I think I probably have caught the devil in the sky is that he's fallen in Revelation. That it, in Revelation said he will be flowing down to the earth and the earth will be in trouble when he's throwing down, that he will torment, that he will torment all the creatures on earth. And he will be cast out from heaven. And I think I just caught him here. Look, wow, look at that. And today, this is the subject I want to talk about, that um, obviously God reveal himself and manifest himself his presence um, to his close servant through dreams, through wonder signs in the sky. I mean, this is a uh, evidence, yeah? And through numbers, yeah? Strong numbers. Um, this has happened to me and to my sister, Rebecca, and she received lots and lots of hearts, yeah? Hearts, love letters from Jesus. I'm so jealous. <laughs> And, um, and me, the Lord usually talking to me from the cloud, yeah, and the dreams as well, and numbers sometimes. But one, what I'm going to talk about today is that, uh, that some of us has allowed the numbers or the dreams to overtake the word of God. Because all of these signs and all of these um, dreams, and the numbers, they are supposed to be a confirmation of what you heard in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit confirmed the word you have read from the Bible. So the word should be the main thing. And everything else you receive, you should support that message, the word of God, the truth. It should not be the confirmation should not be the main thing should not take your focus and attention on the word, especially when it becomes contradict from the word. And I think that, that is what went wrong because we want to go home so much and we want to say Jesus so much. So even though the scripture says no one knows the day or the hour, but because how eager we want to go home. So with every single message, either numbers, dreams, or signs we receive from the sky, we automatically think that is must be the Lord telling us about a time. It, I mean, it is a part. I think the Lord is telling us the overall message is that judgment is coming and he is coming when you went in the right season. But I do not think any of those things are telling us a, a, a specific time because that is against the scripture. Because in scripture clearly says in Matthew 24, 30, 30, uh, 36, 24, 36, no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Now, if you might say, um, the son and the father, they are with each other. So Jesus will know. If the scripture says, 
No one knows, not even the, not the angel, only God. If it says God, then I say Jesus knows, Holy Spirit knows, yeah? But over here, it's not the Son. It specifically says not the Son. When it says the Father, then it's separate, yeah? So it kept away from the Son. So the Son, Jesus Christ, he doesn't know. And I understand why we become so upset just because we want to go home. And the Lord does not blame us. But we have come into a time, you know, when we become obsessed with something. Yeah. It takes our focus attention from the world. And then our faith starts crumble. It this happened again and again. When we are on high watch, ho so hopefully on a day, yeah, guess on a day he's gonna come. And then when that day passed, he did not come. And we become very discouraged. We become confused. And we become we start doubting everything. And that is not good. That is not good. And we even get frustrated with God. And I mean, I went through this myself. And I, 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 I left YouTube for, for a while. And then I come back, I realize that the Lord want me to, why I'm still here. The Lord want me to concentrate on the work that he gave to me. Just like Noah, he want, he want Noah to concentrate on build the ark, not constantly checking the time. If he, Noah was constantly checking the time first, it will make his days very long. Cause the ark taking over hundred years to build. Secondly, he will, it will, he will do, if he concentrate on the time, he will delay the work that the Lord want him to do. He will delay the work of building the ark. Then he will miss the point that the purpose God gave to him. And the flood only comes when the ark was finished building. Then the flood comes. The flood cannot come if the, if the ark is still not finished building. And here today, I'm not criticizing any size anyone. I'm just because I, me too, myself has fallen into this um, obsession of um, obsessed with timing of the rapture, you know, um, and that made me actually that have misled me, and have uh, but but I stick with the word of God, and I now I see very clearly the signs everything that the lord gave to me is to support the scripture just like this one you see that is to support scripture revelation revelation i i don't remember which chapter but it's about the one uh it's a 144,000. um it is about the one that uh, when devil when when satan is throwing down from heaven to earth and he's gonna cause chaos on earth Great Tribulation, that's the time when the Great Tribulation comes. So uh, when so I sent this message, when I realized this, I sent this message to Sister Rebecca. Uh, um, <laughs> and at the same time, um, Sister Taiwei, we are, we are as four friends close, we are like a mini church. So we write to each other daily email and she she didn't know I sent a message to Sister Rebecca audio video, uh, an, an audio, and she wrote a message in our group message that confirming what I said to Sister Rebecca. And over here, I want to I want to read her email, and both of our of our drawing to confirm this message that we've heard. Yeah, that we cannot be, um, we cannot be, um. Mm, distracted by anything else we need to purely focus on the word of god yeah and um and uh, we need to we need to concentrate focus on building the ark which here i understand is our faith yeah and we can only build up our faith by trust the word of god and everything else you receive should support that fact the word of God. Okay, so here is Sister Pai Wei's message. 
I am listening to brother, a brother latest. Over here, I'm gonna not gonna say the brother's name because that is not the purpose. But as an example, um, many of us has become, you know, has making the same mistake this brother is making, that he's falling into obsession of numbers. So, um, she, this is what she's talking about. She, this watchman, yeah, brother, and she saw his video recently. I'm listening to brother latest, and as I have understood my calling in this tiny church community of ours to be the one who sounds the alarm if anything fishy or new age is trying to creep in, I'm sounding that alarm right now. This is not sane, not on any level. Please hear me out and take what I say very seriously. I have seen that God can commu communicate through numbers. Yes, he can communicate through any media he wants to. That is his privilege. He is God. But what is going on right now in some parts of the Watchman community is not sane. I do not stand behind it and I firmly rebuke it. I do not use such words lightly. This is Pai Wei using her teacher's voice. No, no. An M split in two is not two N R one S facing each other, making eleven. No, the fact that he saw one to eight in some random rain in August doesn't mean that a number should be split up in one plus two plus eight equals eleven. No, the fact that the time now that he is making the recording happens to be 11.43 doesn't mean anything. No, the fact that the rec recording he made of his dream last night is recording and 25 doesn't mean 2 plus 5 equals 7 and therefore God speaks. No, no, no. When I was in New Age, there was this idea that communication with the unseen was easy and instant. Pretty much like instant coffee. Want a message from your angels? Pick up your angel cards. Want to communicate with your angels? Keep an eye out for angel numbers. Quick and easy. You never had to pray about anything. Even less wait. This is number worship and I want no part in it. This is worship in the strong catalog alongside the Holy Bible. This is Bible plus as I don't want to have anything to do with any sort of Jesus plus something, mindless activity. Neither am I going to go along with any Bible plus something activity. I am at 43 minutes and I cannot finish this video. It's too painful to listen. Church, I'm sounding my alarm loud and clear. This is not saying we are not to worship semi gods, and these numbers are quickly becoming exactly that. So this is Sister Pyre's message to us. And she said, I wash my hands off this. So she want to have nothing to do with number worship, which I completely agree. Yeah. So I sent her a reply. So I saw, um, so, um, um, so this is my reply. I saw brother Nate's video. Um, so, sorry, this is my reply. So, what happened is that uh, I don't really, I have not really watched this brother's video. I don't know him very well. This is the same brother, Sister Pai Wei is mentioned. But, I had a dream about this brother making a video the, the day before uh, Sister Pai Wei sent me this message. I did not know this brother is... Uh, is um, so obsessed about numbers. I did not even know him as what kind of, you know, a, you know, what kind of brother. I don't really know him personally. That's why it's, I'm, I'm here, I want, to, I want to be clear. This is not about criticizing anybody. This is only sounding a, a line. So if any of you are becoming obsessed with number dreams and even visions and signs, that overtake the word of God, then you need to stop. This is only an example, not a criticism on anybody, okay? So in my dream, I saw this same brother, Sister Pai Wei mentioned, 
uh, he is making his latest video. The title is Dentist Shoot. So basically, he recorded his dentist not giving him the exact number of teeth filling he asked. He gave him the wrong number of filling, not the divine number. So he was very annoyed with his dentist and he decided to sue his dentist giving him the wrong number because it's not the divine number he wanted. You see, the meaning of this dream is that when we are so obsessed by the number, the number start taking control of us and then our obsession will be used against us by the devil and he will use this number to 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 fit to our wishful thinking to match with what we want because we are losing sight what should happen is you if, if you really want to sign you should pray you pray to god god please give me a sign or something yeah you pray and if the lord gave to you then it's good if it doesn't give to you it doesn't matter and if the Lord does give you a number, you need to follow. You need to find a scripture to match with that number. Always go back to the scripture, because any number the Lord gave to you, if it's from God, the number is to guide to you to the scripture. That is why the number exists in Bible, because they they are they are a number that need you back to the word. But when you just when you just look at the number without the word, separate the number from the word, then that is not a God anymore. You see, the purpose of number is to guide you to the word of God, not guide you away. The word should be the main focus. Okay, the number comes side like a side dish with the, with the word. Okay, so, so this is my short drink. So I I just sent Sister Rebecca a long audio telling her that this obsession of numbers in the Watchman community has gotten out of hands. We must stop this. When we are obsessed about something, that's not a word of God. We allow the obsession to control us. Therefore, we give the devil a reason to attack us. He will certainly use this obsession, obsession to manipulate and attack us evidence would evidence would be your faith become unstable like an addiction like an addiction when you get a good number you are high and you feel holy spirit filled when you didn't get the number you desired you became angry upset and doubt everything again you will be up and down not able to experience the spirit of love the spirit power and sound mind. Now here I'm not talking about God doesn't speak us through numbers. He certainly does. Numbers string signs in the clouds. God communicates with us through all his creations. But the main language God speaks directly to us is only from his word, which is the Bible. Everything else is only here to support the scripture as an extra confirmation. But when we allow number strings become the main obsession focus, we lose sight of the word. Then we lose track of what God wants us to learn, to work on, to hear. Then this wall of faith will start crumble. And the devil is very capable to using our obsession to confuse us. Remember, all cult is built up on some sort of truth. That's how they get people in first. They keep part of truth, then they add their own truth that makes sense to what they desire to hear. The only weapon allow us to attack the enemy in the armor of God is the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. When our focus are not on God's word, we lose this sword and our shield became weak too. Therefore, we will always get attacked, not able to defend or offend ourselves. For us to be able to stand firm against the devil, to trample the enemy under our feet, we must completely surrender to God's word, trust only his word, and everything else should add to God's word as a bonus, not a division. 
Otherwise, we lose the belt, the shield, the sword, the whole armor. Soon, everything else we will be found naked again. Both this number obsession and time obsession is no good. As scripture clearly says many times, we will not know the day and hour. The sooner we accept God's will, the sooner we can get on with the work that he has given to us. Imagine if Noah keep on, keep looking at the time and weathers, asking God, when is it going to rain, God? When? I'm tired of building this ark. It's too much. I'm on my own here, God. No one helped me, not even my family. I'm sure Noah had his frustration time with God too. But the scripture says Noah kept working without stopping. He followed the exact instruction of God. He didn't complain. He just kept working till the flood comes. And God only told him how to work. How to work, not the day and hours of the flood. And despite all that, Noah had no doubt. He focused on the job of his hand. He trusted God and his timing, his plan. When he finally finished his ark, then the flood comes. The point, the point is, if we keep looking at the time and the numbers, we are going to lose sight of the job we ought to do while we're still here. The ark we are building is faith. And it's not finished until God tells us so. We might think we are ready to leave, ready to face the shake and the destruction. But are we really? Soldiers went to the war bravely with courage, come home messed up, live in great fear, because they didn't realize they are not ready to face the battle at all. Because they were not trained. Maybe instead of asking God what a time, we need what time are we living we should make this prayer our priority god please expose any weak spot of this wall so i can ask you to repair for me straight away god make my wall stronger enough to stand firm against all my enemy and any kind of shake let my wall be built on top of the body of christ seal it seal it by his blood strengthen it by his word. When God finished building our wall and ark, when, when he knows our faith is sturdy enough for the things he's about to do, then the flood will come, the shake will come. We know God's timing by the evolving of events, not nature, human time. When we see the sword is at our throat, when we are facing death, knife situation, then we know our escape time comes. Our king comes to rescue us from death. Psalm 68, 19. Blessed be the Lord, who daily knows us with benefits, the God of our salvation. Our God is the God of salvation, and to God the Lord belong escapes from death. But God will wound the head of his enemies, the heavy scope of the one who still goes on in his trespasses. Family, please make sure whatever you receive from God, always go back to his word to confirm what you received and focus on working on your own ark, not looking at time. Like going on a stage, we can't go on unless the performance of others finished. And we know our cue to get on stage. When our life is in danger, when our enemy is chasing right after us, when we are facing the Red Sea, when there is no turning back, only moving forward with faith. I'm sorry if I'm being harsh, but I have to be honest with what the Lord put within my heart. Our job, only job, is to build our ark. When we focus on this, do the job each of us being called to do, you will no longer notice how long the time is. Before you knew it, the job is done and the flood had come. Then we know we have tried our best of being the faithful, wise servant of the Lord. So this is my message. And then Sister Taiwei, 
she replied me with my message with one of her dream that she had a dream after she read my message she had a dream okay so and um, this was her dream i was talking with someone whose face i couldn't see clearly but i had the feeling it was jesus i asked him very seriously when is the rapture sincerely when is the rapture and he answered me with a kind toned question yes when is the rapture as if he didn't know either then i got this image or this information into my head i can't remember that he would have told me maybe he did but at least this was the idea the rapture is when everyone waiting for it can believe it it is time i'm afraid i might be botching this up a bit but i hope that was the general idea it made sense in the dream not so much when i woke up like he would have, would have said when you all are in agreement or something like that now that i think about it it sort of makes sense i mean we are more in agreement now than we were last december that's at least my feeling and then rainbow wrote this when he finally finished his arc then the flood came right the floods the floods were held back until noah finished his ark he was a human no superpower so the building took its time when he was ready that's when the flood came also she said this the ark we are building is a faith and it's not finished until god tells us i think this is somehow the key it says in the gospel Jesus couldn't perform many miracles in his own hometown because people didn't believe. So there were instances when even Jesus' hand were tied. Faith is key. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Mark 6, 5-6 not tied in the sense I come because you don't believe, but more in the sense I want to impose my powers on people who are not ready for them. I think. So this is Sister Paiwei's message to me. And then I replied to Sister Paiwei. Wow, Sister Paiwei, that is exactly what the Lord means. He means what his word says. Yes, when is the rapture? I don't know either because this is what the scripture says. So he, Sister Pai's dream agrees with the scripture. This is how I know that her dream is indeed from the, from, from the Lord because it agrees with the scripture. This is how you tell that a dream is from the Lord. This is very important. When are you guys keep when are you guys keep asking me the same question when i told you clearly in my word that no man knows the time nor the angels nor even me only the father knows why are we here wasting time to chase something that cannot be answered it's not for us to know instead just accept my word and get on with the job that i have gave to you i'm so glad for your dream sister it definitely confirms with the message i send to all of you and sister rebecca I think the purpose the Lord gave us confirmation is a full number of dreams. First is to confirm the scripture that we are living at the right season and time for his coming to rescue his church before great tribulation comes. Secondly, is to put the urgency in our heart so we will be motivated to share the gospel and save souls and to make it right with God if we are still not living according to his word. This urgency pushes us to draw near to God like never before, to fear him and to, de and to desire to be his sanctified bride by living a holy life. But many of us has mistranslated this confirmation to him, telling us the natural time, which is wrong because it contradicts with the scripture. Sister Paiwei, please read Nehemiah chapter 4, 5, 6 which I will make another, another video when I have time about um, Nehemiah chapter 4, 5, 6. It is about uh, uh, the P 
people, uh, the Jewish people rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and their experience of uh, rebuild the wall of the temple. It is the same experience we are experiencing now uh, to rebuild the wall of faith that we are going through. So you guys, please go read that. That is what we are going through, the same thing. And they did not build the finish build the wall. They only finish build the wall because God was on their side, because they build not by human hand, but by the hand of God and by the strength of God. It will help you understand what the Lord is trying to do with his people. We are here to build this spiritual wall of Jerusalem. It's the only way to protect the city, make the city secure from its enemy. Once this wall is finished, then we can finally move in and rest and spend in the presence of God, inherit our promised land. The people building this wall, they were facing many difficulties, the threat of enemy, the criticism from the Jews who only knows the law, physical war, not the spiritual one. They too got distracted. They were very tired and very too. But God strengthened their hand. God told them with one hand build the wall, another hand carry the sword. God exposed the skin of the enemy to them. God told them to focus on the weak spot. And when they obeyed God's instruction, when they united together, working together, they finally finished the building of the wall. And the enemy was scared because they realized it was God who was helping them all along. The enemy's plan has failed. This is the main message the Lord wants us to know for our final race. Focus on running towards the goal, not keep looking at the time when the race finishes. Because if we waste energy in looking at the time, we were not able to claim the first prize. And that is the message. Thank you, guys. God bless you all. Bye.